So this is a ro Rosalidae sponge. Let me see. I don't think I've seen a morphology like this one. Right? She is. Like she is stuck. Oh yeah. wait, wait. That might be our target shrimp. Really? Is that little. You want to sample that? That'd be very difficult. Are you gonna get pulled? Can yeah, we, probably. Can we switch um, back to the shrimp over there? We might we have to keep them wide there, Ed, for a second. Yeah. Yeah. We might this because I'm, Atlanta is still swinging. It's very, but the only worry, my only worry is that. Might step back to ship. The, the positioning of the you sponge. Want to? If if science is you're interested in this area, right, Science? Yes. All right, so yeah, we probably have to step back the ship like uh, 20, 30 meters or something. Full, full wide. Nav. I'd like to call in a ship move of 30 meters, uh, bearing zero, zero, zero. Thank you. Yeah, it's definitely a rosella sponge. Uh, I'm trying to figure out if it's the exact species because the multiple heads is unusual. Yeah, I see some people, uh, some viewers are suggesting a calobacus glass sponge. I don't know if I said that right. It's very, that's in the rosella, but it's mm -hmm. definitely the right shape, but it's a matter of that multiple heads and positioning yeah. that is unusual. <laughs> I'm tempted to say get a sample, but that one might be too delicate to get a sample from. Or if you try and slurp that sponge or the shrimp, you're probably going to end up with the whole thing. Yeah. <clears throat> It'll be a few minutes. We're just waiting on the ship in Atlanta to start make it, making its way back. We kind of overshot the mm -hmm. target a bit. Take your time. Um, <laughs> in terms of the shrimp, it is possible that they could have being so close to that sponge, there could be more in the coral. So that might be an option to look closer at the coral for one of those shrimp. Um, if not, we may have to leave it again because I don't want to damage that particular coral unless because it's too high risk for it to take the whole thing down with it. Where is Chris Kelly when we need him? <laughs>
Sebastian, a viewer just uh, sent in a link to an Okeanos Explorer page with something that looks super similar. Uh, um, oh yeah, that's what he was looking at. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have the Okeanos um, the MYD open for you at 24-7 over here. Yeah, I don't know if you can see your screen, but it looked like what you were looking at. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was looking at as well. Um, the only worries about that is that there's some kind of fuzziness on it. I'm not sure if that is a feature of the sponge itself or a cement for it. Nice picture. So this is a beautiful picture. Oh yeah, I want to highlight it. Uh, can we get actually a little bit of a zoom in so we can get a little bit of a clear with the polyp? You want to zoom here? Sure. Yeah. All right, go for zoom in. It's an interesting, like, almost greenish area at the bottom. I don't know what that is. Whoa, hello, down lights. I wasn't sure if that would make it better. Uh, it did. I just have to adjust for it. Uh, this looks... You can hit the down light again. Do you want it on? All yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I believe this is bubble gum coral. Is it? I'm looking for the... I think so. Yeah, because I'm looking for the kind of bulbous. They all kind of come up in clumps of polyps. Yeah, when the polyps close, it looks like bubble gum. Yeah. Right? A lot of ocuray gone there. No shrimp, unfortunately. Beautiful shot, though. Oh, let's get that one in the background rocket. frame. There you go. Oh, are you trying to look at a rock? No, I'm just, I'm, yeah, I'm just admiring it. Okay, you're Push admiring. this down. I did a slow push in. Oh, there you go. And uh, okay. reset you here? Yes. Yeah, yeah, reset. That'd be great. And let me snap in and do a slow pull out. Yeah, I think those little nodules right there kind of represent the, the bubble gum aspect of it. Still cam's got a nice view, so. Uh, let, me, let me go to that. Go to that. I was just taught how to do this. Oh yeah, look at that. So many associates oh, on this. Oh wow. Well, oh, that's a great shot. Captured. <clears throat> nice. So what camera is that from on the ROV? Huh? What camera is that one from on the ROV? The still cam, it's uh, mounted down on the porch looking straight forward. Okay. So down low. So, I guess so it's that kind of like above the Lambda and other one box. It's on basically the other side of the slurp hose on, on the porch. Got it. Got it. Is that the Thurber cam? Yeah, that's the Thurber cam. I think that's a Sony A7. Do you have enough leash now to go back? Yeah, I think, I think we do. So I can pick up. I have partial, I'm going to come full wide. Oh, actually, it's just about there. Do we have any idea of which direction the current is going? The current? Yes. Um, I can tell you in a second. I'll, uh, well, it seems like it's... See, it looks like it's going uh, so it's to start. One, one, three, one, three, five. Uh, it might be best to take a skin down flow from these corals if possible. Okay. So we're interested in that shrimp or no? Um, we can look at the corals as well. Um, I haven't gotten anything from our scientists shore showing an interest in the corals so far. Um, so I don't think there's any targets besides the shrimp and maybe the flat glass sponge. Right. Yeah, it looks like yep, it's, uh, it's uh, eaten away. Um, we are looking more for leather stars and cookie stars, so okay. that guy is, well, that individual is not really what we're looking for. Any spots of red? Because that's the color of the shrimp we're looking for. Oh, wait, I think I may see one in the middle to the top. 
right. In the middle, top like right. This. No, up here? A little bit to the up left, right, sorry. Right there. Left, right. Right where, right where it what, disappeared. <laughs> Everybody circle right. it. Yeah, someone's going to circle <laughs> it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> okay, I see. That's a, that's a crab. Yeah. The white? Gonna, those are squat lobsters. Okay, those are squat lobsters. Squat lobsters, yeah. yeah. All right. Not seeing any of the shrimp. Well, you, well, there was a spot that we saw one before we had to reposition. Right? Yeah, that was on the sponge. <laughs> right. So, so do, do you, you guys think you can would be able to grab one of those shrimp without the, on the bringing sponge? down a sponge? We could try. Be hard because we're gonna have to be fl like yeah. flying. Would, would we, we just unless would we could maybe set down the right here. It was right by the crinoids. Would I we believe. just suction it? You, I think the slurp would be. Yeah, I worry the suction would start sucking the whole whole uh, the whole sponge. Oh, you yeah. think? Well, you think what well, you guys think would be the best option for this then? We could try the suction like a light suction. Yeah, right there. We gotta get close enough to let's see. I think that's the one that he wanted, right? The white and red one? Um, it's kind of like, yeah, can we get a zoom in on this? I think it's a light red and light red one on the left. I'll but that. Yeah, you can get a zoom. Right. Coming in. Sorry. Is it possible to get a view from Atalanta of her, or is, do you want to keep your orientation forward? And here's something for you guys to compare as well. It's the oh, top left. sliding down. I think the one on the right is a little bit too dark. Let's go for the one underneath. See if yeah. you zoom in the one on the kind oh, of the left. The multicolored one. The multicolored one? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I'm not going to be able to reach from there with the slurp. But maybe from this side. Uh, it looks like there's two. One yep. on the edge right there. <clears throat> if you guys think it's too precarious, let me know. Yeah, let's see if I can... Thanks, Tito. You're welcome. The shrimp moved. They are very stalwart. And Chris Kelly just logged in and know that most of the corals around here are bamboos. Um, Chris, I know you love sponges. Anything special about this rosella? So we're gonna get the uh, jar ready. Thanks. Get the camera up. Where's the sample going? It's going to be a slurp, so it's going to be, be probably in jar four. four. Yep. Chris is, is saying that, that this Roselle is a newly described yep, species. That's four. Yep. So he's looking up more information now. Let's focus on the shrimp for now. Oh, so that is the shrimp we need? Oh, no. Chris Kelly is referring to the sponge that we're taking it off uh, of. Um, he may advise further on whether or not we want to collect. Oh, I just meant like we're slurping. We're yeah, we're slurping sure. the shrimp right now. Okay, so it is the one we need. Um, pretty sure it's close enough to the description. We're just um, going to try and do like a little suction, maybe like 10% to start. Okay, Chris 10%. says no need to collect the sponge. He's saying it's hollow. Coming in with pocket. you, okay, Jake? Yeah. Be a little bump left. Okay with that? Yep. Woo. Oh. 
Maybe a little more Bring suction right before it now. swims away. So 30. Come on. Oh. Oh. I swam out. It was oh, close. Wait, you be behind the kind of. Oh, oh wait. you got something. You got something. There he is. Uh, can, I, can I get it while it's swimming? <laughs> Come on. Nope. No. 100%. Yeah, shrimp are hard. They're quick. Is there? Is that the, another one on there? Yeah. I might be able to reach there. Oh, that's an awesome shot. Oh. Not the crinoid. Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh, look, it's coming back. Oh, wait, never mind. Oh. Mike, you were <laughs> muted for that one. <laughs> I heard I it. Said, I said for crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, so I don't know where it went. Yeah, They're we gone. may have to abort this one. <laughs> While we're on this shot, Sebastian, I said on the camera you were asking about. Huh? Huh? Oh, you, you that's a shot? Oh. Oh, yeah. That's a I, shot. Yeah, I would take a shot of that. Take a shot. Um, can we actually get a zoom in on that little red one? Sure. Let's see if it's close enough description. Maybe it might make some do. Maybe it's just maybe a slight color more. Good zoom for in? zoom, Ed, on yep. the shrimp, yep. red shrimp. I'm going to highlight this, too. Oh, I see the other shrimp's tail right there, too. It's hiding. Uh, it's definitely, <laughs> okay. oh, there's, there's one, one of the bottom ones. One of the yeah. Ones, but the red one's very pretty, so. It has some kind of blue iridescence off one of its antennas. Yeah. So too tight. Oh, the primer's getting in the way. Oh. Ah. They're too fast. Very oh, strong. Back. <laughs> he really likes this. Some crinoid pieces did oh, get in the oh. in the sample jar, just so you know. Okay. That's okay. Eggs on that one shrimp? Yeah, the red one, the Something. yellow stuff. Gosh. Oh, the red one has like some kind of parasite on it. Is that a parasite? Oh, oh, well, I got the red one. Yeah, you got him. That wasn't the right one, though. Uh, can we put them both in? Thank you. Uh, I don't see them in the jar, though. Oh, there, there it is. is. There it is. Well, that's a five ticket ride. Oh, yeah. I think it's right there. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Oh. oh. He's coming back. So at least this one likes to stick around. Like his buddy. Well, they're ready. Yeah, let's turn right in. Oh. 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 It's still there. I can see it behind the big head of the sponge. I'm surprised. All of them didn't communicate with each other, like, I know. get off, get off. The one went back and sat right next to yeah. its friend, and then the friend got slurped. Looks <laughs> <laughs> like a successful sample. Well, it's something. Yep. Yeah. Good to figure out what that parasite is. Hmm. Yeah, I don't see where the shrimp went. I think we lost our chance. Yeah, here. I think we can move on. Yeah. Roger. Valiant effort, guys. We got something out there, at least. You have a sample ID? Um, sample ID 26. Thank you. Um, Mike, I don't know if you know the first probe on this. Am I supposed to log the crinoid pieces and the shrimp separately as, as samples? I would just note on the shrimp sample that a There's bit of crinoid got pieces. in there. I don't think it's meant to be a sample, right? All right, got it. Thank you. Fish on her, slurp.
We've got a question about the lamps on Hercules. Um, one of our viewers was asking how many lumens these lamps are. Oh, that is in our annual report. It's know. also on Nautilus Live. Yeah. Mm. If, you go if you go to, to Harvey, technology, Harvey and Hercules. Hercules. Yes. Okay, I'm on a mission. Let me go find it. <clears throat> it's more than one, less than a million lumens. <laughs> Can I officially declare that uh, the, these shrimps are adversaries for the dive? <laughs> Can I say that these red shrimps are uh, adversaries for the dive? Oh, not our annual report, our uh, the, the, the oceanography supplement. All right, moving on from this uh, coral garden here. Yeah. What's the... Shall we resume ship movement? Sure. Yeah, go or ahead. Or do you want to catch up more first? Let's catch up uh, first. Oh, okay. and then. Well, actually, you can call it in. It'll, by the time I get there, it'll be... Okay. Also, I found it. 6,000 lumens. 6,000. That sounds right. Hannah, you have a viewer asking you what's something that you're anticipating or hoping to see this expedition. Oh, um, well, Great my snap. original thing was a seamount, so I'm just really happy that <laughs> I same sponge saw here. that. <laughs> <laughs> Can we do a ship move, please? 50 meters bearing 180 at 0 0.3 knots. I really hope that we'll be able to see the archaeology thing. Thank you. Hopefully. The archaeology thing. Well, I don't know if we're supposed to, I, I don't know what we're allowed to say or not to say, but that would be really cool. Since I already have like well, my first thing checked off. Well, there's a that, but I think we're good for now. Okay, looks like the... It's but, leveling off up here. Yeah, huh? it's definitely leveled off. So we're at some sort of peak. Yeah, we're almost yeah. at waypoint two where this will even out from the slope. But I'm really excited. Every rock we collect, it's like, you don't know what you're gonna get inside of it. Yeah. It's like a grab bag. Yeah, so I think that, that's also what constantly keeps me excited. Yeah, isn't that like when the Megalodon tooth was found? Wasn't that found like in a rock sample? Yeah, it looks like it's eaten. A whole, whole coral full. Any interest in a zoom that on that? Sea star is oh, feasted. Come around the other side of this. No need to zoom, I think. Just observing the area. Oop. So how do you describe this um, topology, um, Hannah? Topography here? Yeah, topography, sorry. Yeah, I just think we're getting to a peak. So it looks, it is interesting because there is some sediment on top of it, but I kind of expected that, especially since we're at a peak. But well, it definitely looks rounded also, it out. it might actually be a good time to take an iskin, I think. Oh yeah, we didn't do that. Yeah. Let's grab okay. this thing real quick. Take a what? A niskin. Okay. Full, full wide. We're oh, moving okay. um, south again. Uh, That's correct? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, pretty much due south right now. Cut. And we've got about 40 meters I'll to go on this move. Unless you want to stop. So this Niskin sample, we will use this um, to look at eDNA. That is correct. How far off the bottom do you want to be for the Niskin? Is it okay to do it right here? Um, I think this should be fine. So Dr. Kevin, Dr. Conrad, 
he was saying how there's overlapping lobate, lobate flows and pillow lavas. Going for five, five now? I think, yes. So this would be sample 27? That is perfect. 27, yes, that's correct. Get number five we're going for? Yep. All right. Lucky number five. Uh-oh. Not triggering. No. Any farther, that's going to rip right off. Yeah. Been there, done that. Yep, I tried four. Four. There we go. Yep, Niskin triggered. Huh. That was Niskin four. Niskin four? I think five looked like it might have already been triggered. Five was triggered before oh, five one. Five was triggered? Yeah. So Shortly after six was. Five might have been a misfire. Uh, so I should probably sample that one as well. Uh, five would be at the time we did uh, Niskin six. Yeah, right. it was. It looked like it was already. Six. That one will be triggered. sample twenty-eight then for Niskin five. Uh, we just did four. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So at the start time of the previous one, yeah. So sixteen. Remember, you were pulling away from doing six, and then I saw one trigger. That must have been five. When y'all say that the Niskins are triggered, what does that mean? Is there They're on a mechanical uh, like release. When you pull the ball, it pulls a pin, and mm -hmm. then the uh, the top and the bottom of the Niskin trigger and fire, and then they, they lock close and uh, hold the water uh, in the in the bottle until we surface. Nice. So for those viewers who may not know what a Niskin is all about, it's collecting environmental DNA, which is a genetic material that's shed by organisms in the water column. And that helps scientists to process when they process it to make new discoveries about marine life. Mm -hmm. How new is eDNA sampling? Is that like a newer technology? It's pretty new. It's becoming extremely popular. Um, Popular because it's less, I guess, like invasive? Sample? It's less invasive and it doesn't require you to actually see any of the animals you're looking for because they leave little traces of their DNA behind in excrement and slime and little bits of DNA that just fall off them as they go about their day. So kind of like how we shed skin cells and hair yep. and stuff? Yeah, exactly like that. Right. Might have to come down on the winch a little bit for me to get down to the bottom. Potential nodules here? What do you think? Are these too angular? Hey guys, if we haven't um, rotated the, uh, or I guess how does the sample, jar, the uh, slurp jar work? Can it, if oh, we yeah. don't rotate it away, can it swim out? No. It shouldn't be able to swim out. Okay, cool, thanks. We can do it anyway.
So now we're on the hunt for a rock sample? That... We're over it? Uh, we almost we're up? almost to waypoint two. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna look for a rock sample somewhere between two and three. Oh, okay. So Hannah, this seamount was formed from an extinct volcano. Are all seamounts, do they all come from volcanoes? Yeah, so seamounts are just a description for underwater volcanoes. Mm -hmm. But seamounts can be also currently active because we have, I can think of two off, two or three off the top of my head that are currently active. Hot spots, so creating these volcanoes and for example, there's one called the Marquesas and the Pitcairn, and those are currently active, and mm. those are, so far, our, our ages and chemistry of these rocks, well, I guess not really the ages, but the chemistry of these rocks is leaning more towards a hot spot, mm -hmm. creating these seamounts. But seamounts can also just be formed from, also from, tectonic plate movement and subduction so Ooh, might be a shrimp in there nice yeah. thank you for that hannah i'm excited for us like to take a look at these rocks soon and i know you're excited so we do have an underwater um volcano right off about 20 miles off the coast of hawaii island mm -hmm. um previously known as loihi oh, it was recently renamed to kama ehu uh, kanaloa the reddish child of Kanaloa. Oh, we got cucumbers making an escape. Hmm? Yep. Good uh, still cam shot. Oh. Let me get that. Got the uh, Atalanta backlighting. Oh, that's a really pretty shot. Yeah, can you capture Atalanta? Sebastian. Oh, capture Atlanta? Um, Chris Kelly is noting through the backscatter, he's apparently he's pulled up in our GIS, um, that the top of this geo should be mostly hard compared to our last dive. So for our viewers that are just tuning in, um, we are currently diving over a seamount. And correct me if I'm pronouncing it wrong, this is Loudon Seamount. Does that sound right? Sounds correct to yeah? me. Okay. Um, and we are, we have been looking for some shrimp. We successfully sampled one shrimp, but it was not the one that we believe we were looking for. And then soon we will start to look at some rock samples. Hannah, are we gonna go back to looking for the nodules? Or are we looking for like the angular shape? We're rocks? gonna be looking for the angular shape. Nice. Sub angular to angular. I actually want it to be pretty big. <laughs> so that I have a lot of it. <laughs> it's a dark spot there on the left. Just one out frame. Dark spot? Yeah, just back up or drop down. And for that backscatter, I actually meant King George. Right there. You know, uh, not this one. Here? Yeah, just trying to stood out. There we go. Looks just kind of like an unsentimented face of rock. Huh. Yeah. yeah, I think it's yeah. just unsentimented. That's weird. Really sharp, fine. Yeah. Wow, it's look enough. at that. The ledge? Yeah. That's massive. What are those little white spots in that coral right there? Maybe snails. Ooh, oh, is that one of those thingies? It indeed is a thingy. Yeah. <laughs> well, the one that had the, the fish. Jelly? The fish head. Oh, the siphonophore? Yes. That wasn't a siphonophore to me. That oh, was wait, what's this? I'm going to zoom up here. In the top yes, right. Or is that just a collection of marine debris? Or a snail? I don't know. Go with the snail. Oh, 
Are those predatory on these on this coral? Oh, those, those are definitely snails of some sort. Um, anyone have a good idea on what coral this type of coral this is? Oh, wait a sec. Oh, this is a Solandria sp species. It's a hadrozoan, not an coral. That's why I was like confused. Okay. Do these snails normally live close by each other like this? Um, is that the bubble gum? Or am I wrong? Okay. Given that we haven't seen many of these snails on any of the other corals, I might think they might be exclusive to hydrozoans, possibly. Hmm. I'm not sure if Chris might know anything more about that. Oh, look at that one. Yeah, I saw that. Looks like it's been picked clean. Yeah. I've seen several of those so far. I wonder if yeah. there's the stars are very active around here. Well, it might still be working their way up there. See that white? Yeah. Is that the bamboo? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That might be a squat. Hard to tell. I think it's a squat. Yep. Squat lobster. When they are, uh, can you do a quick push here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they are threatened, they like to throw up the sea crustacean gang sign. That's a bamboo coral cool. for sure. I'm getting better. <laughs> See, geologists can learn biology. We can live in medicine. Yeah. <laughs> We're approaching waypoint two. Yeah. We passed way far. No, we're we're just we're almost there. Just about. Chris saying that squat lobster was newly described. So that must happen a lot, Sebastian. Newly described species as we do more uh, deep sea exploration. Yes, that's correct. Um, the pro a big problem with deep sea taxonomy is that we can often get very few um, uh, descriptions of these animals, either from video and even fewer through our physical sampling. So it can be difficult to really document new species and describe them in the literature. So opportunities to do so are a little bit delayed compared to stuff you see on land. Um, so that's also a big highlight of the type of work we do here on the Nautilus. Um, we help to describe these new species, and that allows us to evaluate the uniqueness of these ecosystems based on their community composition. These these rocks look pretty angular up here. Chris Kelly is also noting that we actually got the holotype of that species of squat lobster from the Nautilus in 2018. Can you explain what a holotype is? Yes, of course. A holotype is pretty much the absolute model for that species. It will be the representative going forward for all taxonomic descriptions for that species and pairing it to it. So whenever you collect an animal for the first time, you typically try to keep as preserved as much as possible, and you send it to a museum, and it becomes what we call a holotype. So that the base description for that species in written form is made, and that is what's used compared to all other possible of that species to get a good idea of what it should look like or if there's any differences that make it a different species from the, one, the holotype. So that kind of speaks to the importance of these samples. Um, they're very hard to get, very rare, uh, very well curated once we do um, sample them and preserve them. They're often a uh, permanent record and uh, these biological archives. So 
just for people's awareness of kind of how important these samples are for describing biodiversity. And I think that's the hallmark of um, OET is that these um, these rock? data are available, publicly available around? for um, researchers around the world. So such an important thing that things, uh, organisms are not kept in depositories away from people, but that people do have public access Interesting, this is Derek. Uh, I, I got the chance to tour the Smithsonian um, Museum, which is a sort of a national biological repository in the US last year. Um, it was really fascinating just to see uh, these huge stacks and stacks filled with jars, uh, wow. hundreds of thousands of jars of samples, and spanning cruises from, you know, things that we just did last year to some of the earliest or the earliest oceanographic um, ex explorations. Where is that? In uh, DC, okay. down in Washington. Nice. Um, so it's very exciting to look through the jars and find samples from Nautilus, find samples from Okeanos Explorer. Um, so it's, it's really fun to be out, out at sea collecting these and then see where they kind of end up um, and how important they are. Yeah, I know. Hannah, you were saying it was really cool because you've used Nautilus samples before in some of your research. Oh, my whole yeah. research project is Nautilus 1 to 34 rocks. Wow. Yeah. And I used the data logger information that Sebastian mm -hmm. is working on, the mapping, fantastic. I was able to make beautiful, well, my friend Sarah Olson she was able to make beautiful ArcGIS diagrams, maps mm -hmm. of the seamounts. And I'm really happy that the Nautilus, that I'm on the Nautilus, because it's, again, it's full circle because I've only seen the ending of like what the result is and not mm -hmm. really the beginning of like collecting it and sawing them open and taking photos. And I'm so excited that we have a microscope on board. Oh my gosh. Definitely can look at, get an even better look at these mm -hmm. minerals up close. And they're just so pretty. They're so pretty. So, yeah. Yeah, nature is the best designer when you think about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I need to come down in the wet lab once we get these samples after this yeah. dive. Yeah, this will be a little earlier, so, so it'll be more activity around. You got, everybody was up for the last one, though, but is it like, yeah. what, was it four? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Yeah. I guess we were up because we were just. Yeah, we were up watch, but um, yeah. Sea Star. It's usually better to bring yeah. up vehicles during the day so that yeah, you know that. more of the support staff are around. But you, everybody was up. You, the, the whole team. It was, it was cool to see all of you guys march yeah. out <laughs> once they cleared you for the vehicle. This thing's been eating well. Yeah, yeah they stopped. They are stopped. Buckets and trays. It's and eating right now. Goggles <laughs> and gloves. Yeah, so mm -hmm. all the biological specimens that Nautilus collects end up at the Harvard's um, public repository. The Museum of Comparative Com Zoology. Yeah, yeah. MCZ. Yeah. Thanks, Ed. Yeah. I have a friend who went this summer, and she, like, raved about it and loved it so much. And the, I'd uh, love to go. the rock samples are stored at University of Rhode Island's um, Rock mm -hmm. and Core Lab at the Graduate School of Oceanography campus. Yeah, that's where I got my samples from. They were shipped from Rhode Island. I had that was my first uh, um, grad student internship uh, was working at the. Zoom there, if you On this Sumu Sea Star. Yeah. Wow, wow. that's impressive. My um, sophomore year of ocean engineering at URI, we had a um, geotechnical engineering course, and we cut a, cut open cores from the Gulf of Mexico yeah. from several thousand meters deep, and I think they were actually, they might have been, I don't know what, they might have been collected from Nautilus, I can't remember, but. I don't think they've done coring from Nautilus. Okay. Actually, I know they haven't. So. Not, not big ones like that. I'm no biologist, but I'm guessing that's the before on the left and the, or no, before on the right, after on the left. 
sorry, can you clarify that? You think like, before predation, like after predation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely eating. And this is bamboo corn? That's right. I see right. the bands. You can tell by those little That's bands on the nodules. No, we're learning. On the nodes, not nodules. So, this thing looks just, just gorged. <laughs> Plump. Yeah. Looks like a flower. Is that a scientific description there? I just Plump. hope the... Plump, yes. Scientific name like includes Belushi or Farley <laughs> or something. It looks something. like it passed out like halfway through its meal. It was just like face down in its yeah, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Quick, quick power nap and then back to it. Yeah. Yeah. So in Hawaii, after you eat a big plate lunch, we call it kanaka tak. That's what that looks like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do sea stars use their arms for? Um, like we just moving around? Yeah, mostly yeah. travel. They have two feet under, you can see the little row on the one that's bent out. Mm -hmm. They have two feet that come out of there and they use that to move around quickly. Um, and at the center and behind is their mouth. They'll use those two feet to grab things as well and bring it towards the mouth to eat it. In this case, he doesn't need to do that because he can just crawl on top of the octopus. Are we done with our ship move? Are we yeah, we just holding up here? So, see where we want to go now here. Yeah. Wait, point three. <laughs> Slightly different. So yeah. we'll get a rock along the way. Yep, just Yippee. call it whenever Sweet. you want, Taylor. Yeah, I see some flat ground coming up right now. So I was, I'm probably going to start looking. Hey, Derek, we've got a mapping question if you have a second to answer. Sure. Yeah. Um, someone's asking if there's 3D data uh, that we get from maps and if we have a LIDAR on board? Uh, we currently do not have a LIDAR on the ROV, um, but we do we do get our 3D terrain maps of uh, the, the seamount that we're diving on, for instance, from mm -hmm. the multi-beam sonar that's mounted to the ship. Um, so that provides a good base map for us to work from. Uh, it's not super high resolution. It's, um, about 75 to 100 meters resolution in terms of the terrain. Um, so a topographic map and a terrain surface that we can plan our dives around. And that's how we planned this dive yeah. from Nautilus mapping over this feature. Um, but yeah, that you can actually put uh, LiDAR onto an ROV and get centimeter resolution um, mapping over a feature like this. So it's really dependent on how close you can get to something and the type of sensor you're using to map it. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And are the maps that are created, are those public anywhere? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Every All the mapping data, both the raw and the processed and mm -hmm. the grid products we generate are, are all archived. When would something like LiDAR be preferred to like a side scan sonar or like Maybe synthetic uh, sonar? LiDAR has a very short range because yeah. it's light. Okay. Um, so you're really looking at within a very short range of the seafloor. Okay. Um, whereas a side scan, you could fly higher, cover yeah. more area. So can we look at the rocks over here, please? Uh, might be able to reach over there. Can give a, can tug Atalanta a little bit. Yeah, which, so do we just want to keep progressing up slope though, or are we going to try to sample a rock here? I could probably, Probably sample a rock over here. Looks like we need to give you more tether. Uh, I think we could do it. Tito's coming down, so give a, give a little more leash, a little more scope. <clears throat> Which ones look appetizing? Yeah, so can we look over there, actually? Okay. Look at that use of the draw. That's great. Um, nice okay. arrow. I'm looking at this one. Uh, okay. Or, hmm. Yeah, looking at this pile right here. Okay. Get a sense of scale with the lasers, about mm -hmm. 50, maybe 15, 20 centimeters.
the one to the right that looks a little bit like home base looks promising. Yeah. Too. Can you zoom in on it, please? Uh, yeah. Are we down? Yep. We're down. Ready to go. Go on. Holding. Yeah, that's perfect. This one looks pretty good. That one looks good. Cool. That one looks cool. <laughs> that one looks almost nodulely on the right. She wants yeah. all of them. <laughs> yeah, so these yeah. are all looking. You want us to slurp them? Really good. <laughs> yeah, let's slurp the rocks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think. Is this. Is that one attached to the one in the back? We're going to find I think out. That's one rock, yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I Hard can't to tell. tell. Oh, yeah. And poke it. Yeah. If it's not yeah. attached, is that the one you would like? I'm gonna pick up the little. Possibly. You might have to hop because forward. Because if we rotate it though, and it. Read your mind, Ed. Read your mind. Yeah, I still, I still can't tell if it's all one. I already lost which one we were looking at. Over here. Two. Two. Oh, yay. Yeah. Okay. You can pick that one up and spin it around for me, please. <laughs> <laughs> It's like trying on a new outfit. Yes, yeah, so Simon spin. says. <laughs> and we're hoping to see that red brown color. Uh huh. Mm. If not, it's okay. But preferred. Coming in with you. Ooh. Wow. Okay. A little bit of, maybe? No, not the discoloration. Um, I'm not seeing... What's the verdict? I, I don't, I don't know. Because <laughs> usually we want to see also, like... Um, Kevin says looks good to him. Like, lines... Oh, Kevin? Yeah. Okay, well then we'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> He's about to elaborate. Okay. Well, because I know for some of them, they have, like, these almost like V-shaped lines, not really V-shaped, but you can kind of see the flow. I don't know. He says the reddish Where? indicate the glass. Are Where's this one going to be going? Are not yeah. for dating. Sebastian. I, I didn't Sebastian, mm -hmm. where's this one? Have, where are we going to be placing this? Oh, it was uh, more of like a burnt this. orange. <coughs> and it was, it was one that we pulled up. Starboard box oh, wait, B. Starboard box B. All right. Yeah, can so wait. Actually, can we put in Lambda? Sorry. What was that? We can put it in Lambda, actually. No. Lambda. Lambda? Oh. But do you have a preference? We can just put it in D. It's Is, small okay. Okay. I don't know, do we have an L? <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> also, I'm hopping off for another ship to shore. Rennie and I are going to be talking to like 100 first graders in California. All right, have fun. Good luck. <laughs> all right, see y'all, oh. I guess, at breakfast. Are the, yeah. one of the boys in this? So, Kevin, for huh. the one that I was talking about, reddish, it I'm was, we picked it up, it and we rotated okay. it, and it was um, It's on the hydro her hydraulics the page, and then yes, um, it it'll like be sure. sample tray out. Kind of brown. So Sample tray out. Yeah. But yeah, no, the reddish is the devitrification, so that's what we don't want. At least that's what I remember Val saying. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. Put that shirt. Yeah. B. Do you want me to fire a sample? Oh, okay. uh, sure. Thank you, Kevin. Dr. Kevin. Thank you, right. guys. Bombs away. Let's just float. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it was pumice, it would. It wouldn't be down here, then. It wouldn't be down here, <laughs> but... <laughs>
All right, you ready for a dive? Yep, yep. That's ready for a dive. Hole 29. Circle 2-9. So Hannah, can you give me a quick description for the um, NCC description? Yes, so we will say sub-angular to angular. <coughs> so Tito, you've got those layout buttons over here too, if you want them. And then uh, this one, when we're working on the starboard side of the vehicle, and this is just our normal forward looking. The non-exposed side. Well, Video engineer can do it too. It doesn't matter. Um, if I forget or I'm busy. This one. We've got ourselves a rock. All right. Uh, and actually, are we using this dive or are we using Dan's dive? Yeah, I don't, the side that is, there two, is there different dives? Yeah, this, there's one called Special, which I think uses that still camera. Oh, still camera in the bottom right? Uh, no, it's over there where your brow was. Oh, I think right. I like the yeah, other one. Move on. Gray color. Oh, yeah, the salt. Yeah. Salt with manganese. Guys. I'm, I'm, I'm all right. You're good. Yep. Yeah. Watch lead, move on. Yep. Yeah. Let's uh, move to waypoint three. Okay. Bridge nav. Waypoint three. Waypoint three. Could you please track a line at bearing 194 at 0 0.3 knots? Oh, Dr. Kevin yes, says you can it. find pumice on random seamounts. They travel in brass long distances from their eruption site and eventually sink to the floor. Huh. Oh, oh my God. Well, who would have thought that light, air-filled basalt would be able to sink down to the bottom? Oh, I guess when it fills it's with actually, water, maybe? It's it ash. Pumice is ash. Hmm. We That's find so it a lot in our uh, Laysan albatross because one of their items that they eat are the malolo, the flying fish eggs. So sometimes we'll find that in their bolus, Ooh, the which they right. throw up before they're able to fledge and fly. So this is kind of, we'll be heading a little down slope almost? Uh, no, it's sort I of I think it's further up slope. And then up slope. Okay. Yeah, this isn't the top of the seamount by any stretch. It's just a, it's just a little peak leveled off area. So there's waypoint three for context up these contours. Okay. Looks like maybe Mostly a little, south. A little. Yeah, I mean, there could be a little bit of undulations in here in this flat area. Yeah. So Dr. Conrad also said, it's a felsic vesicular extrusive rocks. We dredge them on seamounts in the mid-Pacific occasionally. Wow. So cool. Yeah, once they become waterlogged, they'll sink. Yeah. We, uh, we Nautilus found some of them, um, I believe, off Santorini in like 2000. Oh, is this a, a jellyfish? <laughs> you need to practice your circles. <laughs> I know. That is a jelly. That's a sea jelly, know. but yeah. There's a very little <laughs> jelly. Kind of like some of the sea stars, the proper termage now is sea jellies. What, is, what does Dory say? My squishy. My, yeah, little, my little squishy. My squishy. Look at him go. <laughs> That's so cute. So the Hawaiian word for, for jelly is pololia. 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 It's like dance, dancing. They're little dance. Dancing, dancing. I'm wondering, are you able to get a zoom on that by chance, or is it too small? Or is it hard? It's just moving all over the place. <laughs> okay. okay. You try. It's doing the zooming. Yeah, it's yeah. going to come right into the oh, camera. Oh, it's still camera. Oh, no, it, that's all the way down there. Uh, it's not coming on that. It's also yeah. going to be out of focus. Yeah, oh, it was there. <laughs> take it's my eyes on the jelly sheet. Yeah, sorry. Like the no, I have one. So oh. For those who are just joining us, we are on Ala Aumoana Kaiuli. That's the name of the expedition in Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. The name Ala Aumoana Kaiuli refers to the path of the deep sea travelers. And it kind of reminds us that here in the Pacific, um, Polynesians have been exploring the Pacific Ocean for centuries and have been able to move around the entire Pacific Ocean 
So here we are on our current expedition and exploring like our Polynesian ancestors. Ship's moving at point three knots. Is that, is that correct? Uh, yeah. Yes. That's what the ship moves. Yeah. Right? I think it's three thousand milli knots. Uh, yeah. That. Yeah. does sound cooler. Uh, yeah. That's how uh, Brian Kennedy used to call his ship moves <laughs> on Oki. Uh, because they're training uh, new officers up on the bridge. Who just messing with them? The reciprocal of 154, ship move of four cables at 2,000 millinots. <laughs> they're up there with an abacus trying to figure out his orders. Oh, today's Thursday. Huh, weird. I thought it was Wednesday still. Uh. It's funny, the days just kind of run together yeah. when you're out on the sea. <laughs> well, especially when you're like, you're not really sleeping a full sea, you're just napping like throughout the day. It's like, it's really hard to tell when a day ends and a day starts. Ice cream Sunday is the only yeah. time yeah. I know yeah. that. It's the only reset. <laughs> yeah, it's a reset. Or cookies at 3 p.m. <laughs> Every day at sea oh, is yeah. Tuesday. <laughs> I think that's a coral, not a sponge. Oh. Okay. Can we get a zoom in on that star, please? Where? The C star right to the right of lasers. Oh, I can, yeah. I'm a little stretched out here. So it might be bouncy, but um, can it. I can do it. I can get it from here. No, I can do it. Okay. I can do it. It's just gonna be, it's just gonna be bouncy. Oh, maybe I can't do it. I can do it a little farther back. Okay. Yeah. I, oh, oh. It's spinning close, Zeusical. But no dice. Oh, it's all over. <laughs> oh. Sorry, little fella. Oh. Oops. It's gonna be tumbling for two years. <laughs> see the bottom of it? Oh, the sea star? May as well just get a documentation of it. Why not? Can we just do a snap zoom? Snap there? zoom. Yeah. Go for it. Oh, wow. You can see it's two feet extending out from the bot center. Yeah. That little light on the middle is its mouth, pretty much. And just make this harder to fly. Let's just keep zooming. <laughs> wow. There you go, coming out. All right. Then you go get back in the box. Can I get a zoom in? No, that's a Casa Georgia. Never mind. I thought that was jelly. Also, a hollow throwing in there. You're a little muffled, Sebastian. Am I? Yeah. Maybe, or a little uh, faint. The mic noise better? is coming through really well. Say it again. Do I sound better? Uh, let me give you a little boost here. Alright. Oh, sure. It's not you. You're here. There you go. How about this? Yeah, it's great. All Sounds right. good. Perfect, thank you.
Are we about to go down or? We've been going fall? down, yeah. Oh. oh, look at that jelly. Oh. <laughs> they go so fast. <laughs> yeah, look at them. Oh my gosh. It looks like a spider. Like a daddy long leg. Have you ever seen a sea spider? No. They're cold too. This might be a bathychorus jellyfish. We've encountered some down at Kingman Reef. The uh, tentacles on the top are for hunting other jellyfish. What? And uh, the bathychorus we encountered in May was, uh, couldn't be described any farther or in more detail than that. And this has a really similar body zoom? plan. Uh, like yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Giving you a challenge, Ed. You a challenge. <laughs> Gorgeous. Incredible to see that radial symmetry and petals inside the bell. Oh, Can you the, repeat the name, the Megan? Bathy chorus. Bathy chorus? Yes, it's oh, a right type of helmet camera. jelly. B A T H Y K O R U S. Wide. That's Perfect. like wide, wide. What an amazing place. There it is again. Oh, <laughs> oh got thrust. So Sebastian, I have a question for you. Um, with our last two dives, I've noticed that there's a similar colors it's like this very salmon color that a lot of the organisms have is there a reason for that um there actually is um have, have you ever scuba dived before or gone like, i free haven't dived? why free dive but not scuba dive okay have you ever noticed if you wear like a bright pink and you dive it becomes a lot less um saturated it becomes yes. a lot less color um in the ocean light reflects differently off the surface as it go down. So the first colors to, to disappear visually are in the red spectrum and pink. Um, so as the deeper you go down, the less you're going to see that color. So often a lot of these deep sea organisms have evolved to not see the color red, pink, orange. Um, <coughs> so they, often or not, some of these animals have figured that out and evolved to feed these colors. So they become a lot harder to see to other animals as they become look black to these other mm. deep sea animals and blend in far easier. Oh, that makes sense. What a great adaptation. It's a very fantastic one. If you go to Puget Sound in the Pacific Northwest, a lot of these animals have developed the same um, strategy just because there's so much sediment output into the sound that it makes it dark already. Mm -hmm. So. It's a very, very beautiful adaptation, in my opinion. Yeah, I know uh, uh, kind of in the shallow areas, uh, Mempachi is a really good eating fish in Hawaii, red color. And they tend to hide in all the caves and under the ledges, and they're practically invisible. So I see the, the beauty of having that red color for your survival. Yeah, because if we didn't have our, our um, Herx or Argus' light shining down, we wouldn't be able to tell these animals were red, or orange, or pink. Um, it's very interesting. So I learned a fun fact about the names of the, these last two seamounts we've been diving on. Um, so apparently they're both named after early uh, trade ships to come to Hawaii. 
Um, so we get to American trade ships, uh, I believe it's the Loudred, uh, not Loudred, Loudon, and the uh, um, uh, King George ships. There are trade ships from the Western Americas stopping in Hawaii to stock up on their way to Eastern Asia. Apparently they what primarily um, sold pelts from the mainland Americas. And that's what Loudon was too? Yes, as well. Okay. Uh, primarily, um, apparently, sea otter pelts in particular, because they're far more in oh, demand back in those that's days. That's sad. They're cute. Have, I, have any of you ever touched a sea otter pelt? A yep. sea what? A sea otter pelt. No. 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 Yes. It's, it's so, okay. So how about you tell me how it felt? It's very um, dense and very soft. They actually have, I believe, around one that million pelt. hairs per square inch. So oh the densest hair of any mammal on the planet. If you actually try and like put, get push the hairs apart to get to the skin, you can't because there's so many hairs. It's very, very luxurious and there was very mad back high in demand back in those days just because of that. Luckily we've seen that sea otter populations are making a comeback with the recent conservation efforts, particularly in the northwest. River the northwest. otters might be one of my favorite animals. The river otter? Yeah, they're adorable. <laughs> they're adorable as well, but I'm more scared of them than the sea Why? otters. Oh no, those, have you seen those videos of um, river otters working in packs to attack like alligators and stuff? Oh yeah. They don't mess around. <laughs> <laughs> Some so, people have them as pets and they're apparently they're quite difficult to keep, but they're really cute. We have those at the wetlands <laughs> where I live. attack dogs. That's scary. Uh, yeah. Thanks for the fun fact, Chris. <laughs> those, those and beavers. Thanks for that historical context. So that's another uh, interesting fact about that time period and also during the whaling season, a lot of uh, Native Hawaiian men were recruited on board these ships because they were such um, extraordinary water people. And so they would go up and go up into the Northwest and help um, you know, do the work that needs to be done in um, getting all these sea otters and the whales and they actually would get offshore over on the continent and intermarry with um, native tribes. So if you go to places like um, Washington, there's a place called, they call it Kalama, but it's actually Kalama, and it's named after a native Hawaiian man who married into the, um, the Native American tribe there. So lots of Hawaiians that there's different places named along the coastlines um, in honor of them. So that's a little historical facts about Hawaiians moving around the Pacific. So Chris added some more information on the naming here. So the whole ridge is named Liliokalani Seamount because these ships that we mentioned visited when she ruled over the islands. Yes, and so there's a question from the audience. Is there currently a movement to rename these seamounts to a native name? And yes, so some of the unnamed seamounts um, in Papahanaumokuakea, we have a, um, within NOAA, we have an advisory group called the Cultural Working Group uh, made out of Native Hawaiian scholars and linguists and researchers and scientists and educators. And they've been really uh, prolific in creating new names for um, newly discovered species. Um, and also we'll be working um, to name some of these unnamed sea mounts. So great question, thank you for that. I know that in my Voyager Seamount track, there are three, I oh, think, unnamed fish. sea mounts. So, and one of them is named Paul, which I thought was so random, because one was like Don Quixote, and then a lot of them was, I, I don't, I don't want to botch the Hawaiian word, but, but it's H A A, with no, like symbols above it, uh -huh. and then H O E. Oh, Ha'a Hale. Ha Ha Hale, beautiful name, Ha Ha Hale. Yeah, so in the naming process, in the Hawaiian naming process, it's really Go a deep thinking process. Yeah.
people, the, the working group, the nomenclature group looks at the description. Um, they look at the ecosystem, the depth. And so um, the oh, naming process is very well thought out and it takes a lot of time and a lot of collaboration because names have power. In the Hawaiian culture, when you name something, you're giving it mana. And wow. there's a deep intention when naming people, places, or things. So um, we know that the names that will be given to these sea mounts will be very um, full of power, spiritual power and mana, and that there's deep intention Wow. That, cool. By the way, what we were seeing up on screen, that was a cusk eel. That's really cool because, yeah, so I had a few that are unnamed and I was like, oh, I wish they, because I really, oh, we also had one named Tamana, T-A-M-A-N-A. And I, I love the Hawaiian names with it. It was just really funny that, well, actually one of mine's named Don Quixote. And then, yeah, Paul, it felt so random. I was like, I that's I my dad's name. Oh, yeah. So I was Go like, this is so funny. That yeah. If you so look over and we'll see my, how I'm not in any autos, names, you can, uh, you can go for it. going to get renamed like, like to right reflect here. the Hawaiian Yeah, culture. there, or you can look at the box okay. here. Okay. You see these ones. Yeah. What is this? Mostly just the auto XY is the one that matters. Can we get a zoom in can on that, Can we get a please? zoom in on this rock, please? Sure. It's an albino rock. Yeah. Or sponge. Yes. Could Spongy. be a sponge. Mm. If it is, I'm gonna feel so so. Let's say it's depth. Smart. So well. Oh. Mm. What is that? Zoom. Go for zoom. It's a rock. What? Now I, I want to just take it just to see what's in it. <laughs> Do you want to sample it? We can. We have space. Mm. Yes. Or we could scratch the top. Or scratch it. Looks it? Like That's sandstone. Fine. But I I want to take this. <laughs> Should okay. we stop? Please. Yeah, we can we can sample it. We only done one rock. I I really. All right. I'll sit down. A little Any, closer. Um, Good eyes, Sebastian. Full full would... wide. I. Oh my gosh. Chris Kelly like... says that that could be a pumice stone that Kevin was talking yes. about. Yes. Let's, Bridge, let's take it up. I'll stop, please. Doesn't it look like it would almost fit perfectly back here? Yeah. <laughs> we should you should put it back. <laughs> Set it setting oh my setting gosh, the I'm geology so of the right. region right. Giant puzzle here. Yeah. Right. It is very out of place. I like that. This is actually a cobblestone road and it's all just right. jumbled down. But if this is a felsic rock, I'm um, that's so cool. Makes you wonder what the chances are of coming across this particular. Oh. To float up once you touch it. So Dr. Kevin says this is erratic of some sort. Not sure how it got there. Typically you don't get ice rafted rocks this south. If it's pumice, you can potentially crush it in the manipulator jaws. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, do you want us to do, do that? Yeah. <laughs> right. comes the worst, we can coming in a little bit with yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Yeah. Crushing things. It looks solid. What's your grip force? Nine. Ah. Yeah. Let's throw it in Lambda. Which one's Lambda? Is that Yeah. Front? Where's Lambda? <laughs> <laughs> That's the Greek letter for L. Uh, I knew that. Where's L? Uh, so, like, rounded. That is beautiful. It's between K and M. Do we have a box Kelly L? Said bone. I don't know. Bone? It might it, be bone. Is it, wait, forward or? Take it, take it. It's Where's a vertebrae. It? Is it a vertebrae? Like a bone. There's no hole in the middle. Oh. Let's, no, take it. Let's take it. Let's take it. Everybody doesn't well, have a hole. So, middle. wait, what? where is Lambda? That tracks more than a rock. <laughs> Lambda is in forward or starboard box? Um, Lambda is forward. Guys, hold up one second, okay? Hold okay. on. Okay. Um, oh, is okay. it a whale bone? Um, let's contact Lounge. It does I'm not, like a whale yeah. Bone. Hold on to it for a sec. Yeah, yep. guys, just hold on for one second. Let me get a yeah, zoom gotta, right here. This yeah, will yeah. tell us a little bit more. Um, Dr. Like Val says pumice. I'm going with whale pumice. Yeah. Oh, okay. Do we have Megan or Dan? It's that's too like smooth and rounded to be a rock. It looks like. Yeah. Well, no. 
This is always so porous. Yeah. More so than that. Yeah. Much, much lighter. And like, I don't know. Christopher Kelly's not sure. It Okay. But he says it's definitely worth collecting in his opinion. Guys, the reason the reason, the reason that I'm having us pause like is because I believe oh. there are laws about whalebone collection. So oh, I just yeah. want to double check. Um, yeah, in the monument, you know, for our sampling protocols. Yeah. Well, just also, I think, other things, too. Okay. Kevin Conrad says it looks a little bit more like pumice, so we're having split opinions. I think if it were a, a, a vertebra, there would be a hole through the middle there of it, right? There are no holes in vertebrae, but there would be an indent implying it on both sides. Can we flip it, please? Oh, I see, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so Dr. Val and Dr. Kevin are saying that it's a vesicular pumice. What's that okay. curve? It has a little bit of in that, but it doesn't read vertebrae to me. Um, it's possible it could be misshapen, eroded. Um, another thing is that we probably see some kind of commensalate organisms trying to reduce it down if it was a whale bone. Um, I'm leaning pumice, but I would like Dan and Megan's insight on this before we move um, forward. Yeah, so Daniel just commented that whalebone collectors are not allowed. I agree. Uh, Daniel, does this look like pumice or a whalebone to you? And so Kevin says pumice isn't that helpful geologically, so I think we should just leave this here, guys. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to take the chance. Cool, though. Hi. Yeah, thank you, guys. All right. And, and thanks, Chris and Kevin and Daniel, for, for jumping in and advising on that. We will put it back. Thank you very much. It is a very strange... If it's a rock, it's really strangely shaped. It's just Exactly weird. how we found yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> we we could go little... put it where uh, Ed thinks it should go. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> That'll complete the puzzle and the entire seafloor will open. Yeah. Well, that was cool. I missed it. No, ending the ending the watch on a bizarre note. <laughs> that was so weird. That's so funny that we were talking about pumice and then. Right then and then. Bridge nav. We don't know. We may have found a pump. Nor will we. Uh, we'd like to track a line at bearing 194 at 0 0.3 knots. Thank you. Watch change of video. Well, thanks everyone. The 48 watch is going to be switching out, so just give, a f give us a few minutes. Thank you all for joining us. And we'll see you again from 4 to 8 p.m. Aloha, ahoy ho.
Where's Bob? <laughs> Good morning, control van. Morning. Good morning, internet. We are excited to be kicking off our 8 to 12 watch this morning on our second dive of the Ala Al Moana Kaiuli expedition here on board exploration vessel Nautilus in Papahanao Mokuakea. We're at the Loudon Seamount. Those of you who've been following already know. Keep your questions and comments coming in, and as we get settled into watch, we'll. Uh, We'll run around the control van and uh, introduce ourselves, but uh, glad you're here. Glad we're all here again, team. Greatest watch in the universe. Wow. Just kidding. We love all the watches, but we are pretty great. All right. So we are currently heading uh, bearing 194 at about, we're tracking at 0 0.3 knots, just all heading right. steadily upslope to waypoint three. Aloha kakahiaka, how only po'a ha, Thursday. Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. Uh, aloha to Veronica. Pretty steep. 
big aloha to Veronica because she was one of the ones helping mm -hmm. us on our last dive when we saw the definitely not a sea cucumber, <laughs> but many people didn't want to believe Veronica um, or some of our friends online who were certain it was a nudibranch, but we got confirmation um, from uh, even others uh, that, uh, let's go searching for some nudies, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> That was Mahina. I am Daniel. Um, we are here on the 8 to 12 watch um, on the Loudoun Sea Mount and uh, slowly making our way up this spine. Uh, but yeah, we can kind of go around the room. Val, you are watch lead. You want to uh, let the world know what we're up to? Sure thing. Uh, yeah, I'm Val Finlayson. I'm a uh, geologist, isotope geochemist at the University of Maryland. Um, I'm here to get very, very excited about the rocks. So uh, what we're doing right now is a, uh, an ROV survey of um, one of the northeastern portions of uh, Luden Seamount, uh, which is a place that we dove on once last year on the south end. And uh, this will help us get an idea of, uh, you know, not just things like geology and structure along the track, but um, biological populations and how that might have differed from uh, other portions of the seamount and other seamounts we've investigated in this area because one of the things that we've really learned about uh, uh, one, one of the things we really learned from uh, King George where uh, we just completed uh, the third ever dive on that uh, is that everywhere each site you go on this uh, one of these seamounts is completely different from the last so we're, we're kind of only just starting to scratch the surface of uh, what kinds of biodiversity uh, thrive on these seamounts and how that seems to change so drastically, both as a function of uh, you know, where you are on the seamount and what elevation you're at along the seamount, or depth, whichever you prefer. Right now we're looking at um, what looks like some old lava flows. So you'll see up on the uh, left side of uh, uh, Herc's view is an old lava flow, kind of comes down as a tube. That's what we call a pillow basalt flow. And it uh, seems to have stalled right about there before it ran out of oomph. So these things will go as long as they have a lava supply, but uh, once that lava runs out, they, they stall and just start cooling and solidifying like that. And it's surrounded by a bunch of uh, uh, smaller pieces of uh, what we presume to be lavas, and all of this stuff is coated in a, it's probably a pretty thick manganese crust. So it's hard to tell exactly what's going on with the geology besides uh, just the morphology of the bedrock and the cobbles that we see around that. So uh, that's why we have a rock saw on board. Let's us uh, cut these open, take a look at uh, what sort of goodness we have inside the uh, manganese crusts. That's why we have a rock saw on board. Yep, yep, Val was busy with the rock saw yesterday after bringing up, uh, bringing up our first round of samples and preparing those. Um, super, super exciting to uh, see what Kanaloa, um, the Akua of this domain, um, the god of this domain is uh, revealing to us. Um, through all these different life forms and also through these pohaku, through these uh, ancient lava flows. Val, do we, do we have an estimate on, on kind of what time period uh, this seamount would have been associated as similar to the King George, similar age range? Uh, that's our best hypothesis right now. Um, we actually have some samples from both here and King George uh, being worked on uh, back at one of my colleagues' labs mm -hmm. to figure out exactly how old they are. Uh, we're hoping to have uh, some information on that by um, November, December, hopefully. Awesome. It takes a little while to do that kind of age determination work. Um, mm. But I, I've also been working on uh, another portion of the science needed to characterize these seamounts and have a little bit of data from both of these as well. Uh, and uh, I, I work on uh, determining the isotopic compositions of lavas from these seamounts. And uh, that basically acts as this... Uh, you know, like, like genetics with a human, you kind of identify certain distinctive traits about them. I just don't do that with, like, uh, genes, because rocks don't have DNA, obviously. <laughs> uh, well, bacteria in them They've might. got isotopic signatures. Yeah. Instead, I look at um, little variations in the isotopic signatures of certain elements, and that can uh, tell me uh, what sort of mantle 
uh, produce the melts that built up these uh, uh, sea melts. And that tells me a lot about um, kind of kind of their history and their story and what that source mantle has been through over time. So Amazing. We're, we're just starting to get some new data on that. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see what we continue to learn because we're only just getting these little pieces of the puzzle so far and we still have a few more to go yeah. before we get that complete picture. It's a fascinating puzzle, this seafloor. It is. Can we get a zoom on this while we're yeah, here? Yeah, what do we got? What do we got? There's something right there. Oh, right did you want to look at that? Sort. We yeah, could we do a quick zoom? Okay, you ready for that zoom? Video. Okay, zooming. Just under 1,600 meters deep with Hercules and Atalanta, and that puts us right around a mile, a mile deep below the surface. Okay, we gotta get going. Awesome, thank you. And we gotta get going. But Virginia, do you wanna do you wanna take this chance to introduce yourself uh, to our to our viewers watching on Nautilus Live or YouTube? Yeah, absolutely. I'm Virginia. Um, I'm a PhD student at uh, Florida State University. I'm uh, currently my focus of my study focus is on seamounts in the North Hawaiian Ridge and Southern Emperor Seamount chain, looking at benthic communities similar to you know what we're seeing here, um, or you know <clears throat> what's visible in in the screens here, um, looking at all sorts of coral and fish, as well as sponges, the crustaceans as well. Oh, it looks like we might have a, somebody of interest there too. Oh, is it a nudie? Yeah. Can't tell. Like cucumber? I think it's a cucumber. Oh, <laughs> like I was just trying to spark sure. the internet debate uh, and you guys yeah, just shut it down. Yeah. Cucumber versus nudie break. I love it. Oh. Zoom in. <laughs> so. Yeah, Bob I'm said zoom in. I thought he said human. I was like, wait, there's what do we have? She's a human. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. wow. I'm the human that's a zoom in. Well, that's so you can see all the sediment it's been eating. You can see it's yeah. guts. Yeah. yeah. Look at that translucent wow. sea cucumber. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, buddy. Wow. That's cool. Okay. That is cool. Uh -huh. Yeah, you can see a lot from that image, which is awesome. <coughs> Our awesome ROV pilots are busy keeping up with the ship moving. We're getting settled back into position here, so um, not yeah, too much we're time. Going 0.3 knots, so or oh wow, yeah, doesn't sound very fast. But Cruising along, it's pretty fast. Cruising we're along, doing this, mm -hmm. especially when it's a slope. I gotta stay out in front for safety. Absolutely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. We trust you, Bob. Yeah. Trust but verify. <laughs> <laughs> always, always. Good scientist, good engineer. <laughs> yep. Good explorer and adventurer. It's the way we all stay safe. Trust and verify. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Kukui, our master data logger down there, you want to introduce yourself to the interwebs? Hey, aloha mai kako everybody, ovo kukui. Um, hello everybody, my name is kukui. Um, and yeah, I'm one of the data loggers and I'm so happy and humbled to be here with you all today. You're awesome. Tossing it over to my left. Mahina already came on, but uh, I want to give a little more of an introduction, Mahina. Of course. Aloha kakahiaka kako. Mahina lani cavalieri ko Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. My name is Mahina lani cavalieri. Thank you for joining Hello. us this morning as we continue to explore the Mauna Kai Palahala, uh, Palahala Laha Kalamai. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, that's but, no um, you know, we're seeing these beautiful pohaku pele, these beautiful basalts, 
rocks. I know Dr. Val's excited, as am I. <laughs> <laughs> But um, excited to have another day with you, excited to be on watch for this 8 to 12 shift and looking forward to seeing what else we will be exploring. Mahalo right. Nui, thank you. Mm -hmm. Looks like a metallic gorgia on the side there. Yeah, it, looks like yeah, it, it definitely looked like another Chrysogorgia. I didn't get a good look at it. Shrimp but associate with it too. Yeah. These uh, Chrysogorgias are so beautiful. Wow. Amazing front row. When you guys have the time, feel free to jump on SPL and introduce yourselves. We know you're working hard to keep us moving and keep up with Nautilus cruising up here. But well, I can I can jump in. Uh, the navigating is going pretty smoothly at the moment. My name is Catalina. I am um, a master's student finishing up at the University of South Florida, focusing on hydrography and. This is my first time navigating um, and my first time on Nautilus as well. And it's been really an incredible experience. So like, like Kukui said, I'm humbled to be here and I have really a great group of people to work, work with. First time, but you'd never guess it. Catalina is just uh, navigating us through these waters of Papahanaumokuakea and these seamounts like a pro. Thank you. Almost as pro as Bob. Bob, you wanna, you wanna introduce yourself? <laughs> Yeah, I'm uh, Robert Waters, and I am a uh, hurt pilot. My short job is facilities manager and ROV engineer. I work on, uh, well, I take care of our, our warehouse facility, and we have a wharf in San Pedro, California. And I develop new electronics for the vehicles. Uh, I just saw it. A building plan for so this San Pedro is part of LA, it's a harbor front, it's an LA harbor, and I just had a building plan for they're fixing that all up, it's sort of an old part of LA, and they're fixing it up with parks and and uh, waterfront shopping, and it's really it looks pretty fantastic. And we're going to be right in the heart of all that. Oh, it's Bob's good. getting an great. upgrade. Yeah, right. nice. I'll have to come see that. I didn't know. That's awesome. Wow, looks like All we're right. getting some new fans that we're we're seeing here. <clears throat> looks like it, yeah. Yeah. Do we have the tether to take a quick zoom into some of those or nope. All good. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a beautiful Chrysogorgia. Chrysogorgia day. That's awesome. Great. Right. Thank you. Metallic Worship, those are some, some sort of, of my favorite. The corner too. Yeah. With their um, <clears throat> obligate brittle star, which is so amazing. Such dainty little pallets. Hey. Oh, that's beautiful. Thanks. Oh yeah, looks like we've got a, a bamboo there. Um, or okay, zoom in. Yeah, yeah, I can see some nodes. Wow. Oh look, and it's got some um, shredder. It's got some crustaceans. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That's fantastic.
Oh, wow, right. that's a beautiful view. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Zach, how's it going down there on Atalanta? And, and you want to introduce yourself as well? Sure. Um, Zach Gonzalez from Houston, Texas. Uh, Happy to be on here. Been trying to get on here for years, and dream come true to be out here helping with the team. Awesome! It's great to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Love it when dreams come true. It's a dream for all of us. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. Guess. You zoom in. Hold fast okay. underneath the live coral there. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. So, Zach, did you have a background in ROV before this? Yes, I do. I did oil and gas for a few years, and, uh, you know, it's, it's very different to come out here and on a research Sponge. vessel. It's mm -hmm. very friendly and you know the, the whole atmosphere is completely, in. completely different from what I'm used to so it, it's it's really nice and it's a change of pace yeah honestly it looks like there's a shrimp and some uh yeah some sort of brittle, some star brittle stars too. all yeah. over there yeah. glass sponge. Right, there you go awesome thank you all right, internet viewers, you guys can add that to the shrimp count. That was a nice, uh, <laughs> was a nice one. We've got some people online loving, loving counting the shrimp. <laughs> Why not? Oh, really? What number are we at then? Oh, I don't know. They'd have to. They'd have to. Uh, um, maybe we have some viewers who will type it in the in the chat. But uh, <laughs> they keep asking me, and I keep uh, falling off the job, <laughs> losing track. <laughs> Amazing. Good. Oh, she got a sea cucumber count. I know. Yeah. Yeah. And a nudie brain count. Mm -hmm. It was a nudie. It was yeah. a nudie last night. Right. That beautiful that. purple. Yeah, awesome. yeah very yeah. exciting. Oh, awesome! Thanks. Mm -hmm. You're right. Another stock sponge. Right. They call it Calafagus or something. I think so. Mm -hmm. a little basket. There you go. Amber, our amazing video engineer, is getting us all these great zooms, and even while we're on the fly. Amber, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, just a moment. <laughs> Talking and turning knobs takes a little work for the first thing in the morning, so what's that? <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, I'm Amber. Uh, I'm the video engineer, and um, I am Robert's neighbor over near the LA region. Um, and <laughs> see, I originally came out on the Nautilus back in 2016 as an intern, and uh, am now returning as a lead video engineer. I'm just thrilled to be here. Awesome. What a team. I think this is our fourth watch together, second dive. And um, mm -hmm. just having so much fun getting to learn from and with this awesome crew, so. And all of you online too. That is, uh, yeah. Oh, and we have a, we have a Veronica online says it's a Bolosoma glass sponge. Bolosoma, the one we saw on the stock. The stock inserts on the bottom instead of the side. Must be, a, might be a distinguishing feature between gotcha, gotcha. a couple different kinds of the, those sponges. Mm. 
We have viewers uh, this morning tuned in from across the United States and also from, of course, from the nation of Hawaii, Kingdom of Hawaii. Uh, and we also have the UK, Canada, Germany, Netherlands, Italy, Finland. We love it when our Scandinavian friends tune in. Mm -hmm. Virgin Islands, um, some fellow islanders off in the Caribbean, Norway, some more Scandinavians, Israel, Spain. Oh, that's interesting. What is this? It almost looks like the entire bamboo stalk has been eaten, zoom. but I can't okay. tell from this. Yeah. yeah we'll get a quick zoom on that. And you can see the bands pretty clearly. Right. <laughs> but I can't see any polyps. Nope, all gone. Nope. Wow. The sea stars got them, huh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. That, it, that's an interesting one. It's pretty cool that it's still standing there. Very, um, especially as it's so so skinny. Probably a a younger uh, bamboo. Let's see if this one's uh, denuded. Mm -hmm. Oh, Zoom in. This one's got some polyps. Yeah, this one's yeah. got polyps. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, or not a ton of polyps. Does though. it? <coughs> those. Oh, those aren't polyps, though. Oh, yeah. Those are, those barnacles. are barnacles and and hydroid. Yeah. You can see that they've um, encrusted even over the protonaceous skeleton. Bamboo coal must be tasty. <laughs> awesome. We have uh, viewers online what who are tuning, in, on tuning sure. in for the first time, wondering if we've uh, seen any cephalopods down here yet. Did, we did see, did we see a squid yesterday on the first dive? Yeah, this is oh, stripped there yeah. too. It is stripped bare. Yeah. These bamboo corals are... Somebody got hungry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wasn't me. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for those zooms. It's pretty interesting. I've never seen a patch of corals uh, of just a single type of coral like that without their uh, their polyps. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. Virginia, is, it li is that likely the best explanation for that, that those have just been predated on and, and that's why the, the polyps are all gone? You know, that, uh, you know, especially, well, it's also on my mind because we saw so many of the, um, you know, sea stars on on uh, different corals yesterday that um, that does make sense to, oh, and there actually might be a sea star on a bamboo down there. But, um, oh, evidence. Um, there could be any number of reasons why some of these corals aren't quite as happy. You know, conditions can change, but mm -hmm. um, I think that's a it's a, it's my favorite my favorite. Your office Expl freezer explanation. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Here we're getting into looks like some sheet flows, possibly some like big broad lobate flows. Uh, uh, kind of building up this part of the volcano means there's not much that you can really sample here but it it, uh, it can be a good place for uh, colonies to start up if other water conditions like nutrient conditions whatever are uh, correct mm -hmm. yeah, look at all this marine snow all right To the cephalopod question, we haven't seen many, if we have seen some, but uh, I'm sure at some point along this expedition we'll encounter, encounter a few. Always a highlight when we see the Dumbo octopus. Yep. So. Yeah, and they're, they're around, they're, they're somewhere. Around. From our online viewers, we have Desde Colombia, Eso Catalina, bravo, bravo. <laughs> Got some fans Aww. of Colombia and you over there, awesome. Catalina. Mm -hmm. Buenos días a cualquier familiar. I don't know who that might be. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a name. It's anonymous, but okay. uh, 
We, we, we love our anonymous Colombian and Catalina. Oh, is that another sea uh, puke? Yeah, the the coloring kind of reminds me of a Cinelac today. They've got, um, but. Mm -hmm. uh, Kukui, when was the last time we took a rock sample? About rock approximately sample? one depth. Uh, I'm, I'm not looking. Good. I'm not looking for one yet. I'm just uh, figuring out what we have in the oh, okay. uh, basket right now. <laughs> Yeah, we kind of need a heads up because we're we're moving along pretty good. So yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll give you a heads up when I'm uh, looking. We got a rock sample previously at about 1,600 meters. Okay. Yeah, so we'll we'll hold off on uh, doing more rocks until we get a little closer to 1,400 meters. Mm -hmm. And we are currently at about 1,500 meters. Just over 15. <coughs> so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the water is very murky here. Lots of marine snow. Yeah, it's interesting. Usually on sort of steep faces like this, you would see a, you would expect to see a lot of suspension feeders, you know, whether it's corals or sponges or, or brisingids. Um, you know, it might still be a little bit below that, um, that Mm -hmm. That uh, yeah. particular depth area where we seem to see a lot of uh, coral now. activity. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We're, we're seeing too. some uh, seeing way better. Oh, that looks like maybe a young Chrysogorgia in the left corner. Oh, possibly. Um, Metallogorgia, the ones that we've seen that have the flat tops, sort of like an oh. umbrella. Oh. Pulling on my pod a little bit. Some of our viewers pointing out that they live quite a distance from the sea, and so many of them have actually never seen the ocean. And uh, this is the way that they get to see the ocean, along with various documentary films. So, such a treasure. It means so much to so many folks, and, and it reminds us of how fortunate we are to get to spend some time so Pulling close to the sea. Yeah. But thank you all for tuning off, in with us. You a little bit. Yeah, get off from the absolutely. Bottom. This is a very different, uh, different view than you would get at the beach, you know. So. <laughs> absolutely. Oh, <yeah. laughs> it's a little chillier down here too. Yes, yeah. it is. I think. Might want a wetsuit. Yeah. <laughs> zoom in. Maybe a whole. Uh, if you're going to go down here in person, you kind of want Elvin. <laughs> oh, true. yeah. We can see here the water temperature is 2.5 degrees Celsius. So, you know, just a, just a little bit above, a little above freezing. And uh, it's, it's perfect for yeah. a swim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Make it on me pretty good. Yeah. This is a, a beautiful Aridic Orchid on the left there. Yeah. They, uh, you can